Hi, this is John Lombers, the creator of Epic Table. And in this video, I'm going to show you a bit about Epic Table Maps. What you're looking at is an Epic Table map that's shared with all the players. And I've simply backed it with an image. Um, you don't have to use images. If you have them handy from a module or if you've created a map, then they make a, a great background to play on. Uh, if you want to just do a, a real quick encounter and you've not had time to prep, you can simply come down to New Map. You can create it private or shared. The advantage of private is that you can prep it ahead of time. So let, let's actually just do that. We'll create a private map. And you start out with a basic battle map surface. You can change the grid to be hex if you like. You can change the grid size if you like. So let's make that 90. Um, change the, the color. Oops, I can't see that. Um, thickness, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can even dismiss the grid entirely if you don't want the grid there. But uh, well, let's go back to something I can see and something that's not terrible to look at. Okay, so you have this background, and then you have basic wet erase battle mat tools. So um, let's come in here and draw a river and cut a couple fords in it. And, you know, there you have a, a pretty quick and easy encounter map. Now, I, once I've set this all up, then I can share it with the players and just by right clicking and saying share and this is going to be um, the right click menus off screen <laughs> so that doesn't help you but um, if I share it flips to to shared and now this map goes out to everyone including anything any tokens that I've put on the map any uh, resources if I had backed this with an image and they didn't have the image already, that would go out to them automatically at this point. But let's go back to our image backed map. Um, the way I got this was simply selecting an image from my file system to use as a background. Once it's here, I can zoom around on it. I can use the scroll bars to scroll the map and putting creatures on the map is as simple as going to the characters tab here and I can just start dragging people on now um, notice two of my characters have top-down tokens and one has a pog style portrait the reason for that is that if I go into one of these guys you can see that I've defined separate images for the face up portrait and for the the top down map token that's useful if i'm using the portrait bar uh, and you know i want a real rich role play experience i don't want to be looking at a top down token so i can i can use separate images in this case this character didn't have a separate i didn't give him a separate top down token so it just makes a pog out of his portrait notice as i move these guys around it's going to highlight where it'll snap to grid so it makes positioning real easy I can come up here to the format tab and I can change the color of his border so for instance if I want to change the color use different colors to indicate different spell effects or different conditions I can do that really easily this way now in addition to snapping to grid from a position perspective these characters also snap to grid from a size perspective so let's take a look at this guy quickly he's set up as a large creature so he's gonna be two by two when I drag him onto the map he's gonna take up two by two squares so that's really handy and if I zoom he's gonna correspondingly zoom 
Now once I have them on the map, I can rotate them. You, know, you can either right click and choose rotate this way, or what I do more commonly is I just use control arrow keys, right and left arrow keys to rotate them clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, I can also use the arrow keys to move them. So right now I'm just using the left and right arrow keys to move him back and forth and up and down. Um, now in addition, if I don't want the the maps to snap to grid because you know maybe the map I'm using just isn't set up for that or it's just not a very it's not a tactically oriented game that I'm playing, I can turn that off come up to the maps tab and just turn off snap to grid and you know thereafter as I move these guys around they don't they don't snap anymore you can also put arbitrary things on these maps or any surface really uh, map or tabletop so if I want I can come down here and um, and throw in a uh, throw in like a, a stairway so it, it put my stairway up at the, uh, the upper left here so I'm going to grab it and uh, and let's say I don't care about this little fire pit thing so I'm just going to turn that into a stairway instead it happens to fit really nicely and uh, you know just like anything else I can rotate this so if I want it like that I can do that, or it looks like this is a little wall here, so I'll rotate it like this. Um, if I want it to be bigger, you know, say it hadn't been perfectly sized already, I can make it bigger or smaller just by sizing here. Um, I can do that with characters too, though when they're snapping to grid, it's nice to kind of leave them as is so that they they stay sized according to the grid. I can put notes on here too. Um, you know, say that I want to label this for for some reason. Um, I can just select a text object. Um, right now, it pops that in the, the upper left, so I'll go get it. Okay, so. Here's my text object, and let's say that I want to just label this stair. So um, I'll call it stair to um, second floor. And I can make this look a bit cooler if I want by coming into format, and um, maybe I want to make the uh, the fill here um, transparent and make the uh, the text a little larger. Uh, looks like fully transparent is going to be that cool. So let's you know do it kind of semi-transparent. Resize this thing there. So you know I can put little labels around that way and. Uh, that way, as the, the characters or as the players discover things, I can label the things on their map if, if that's something that we want to do for our game. Don't forget that Epic Table also supports Fog of War. So there's a, a an entirely separate video that deals with Fog of War, so I won't get into it in great detail here. But just real briefly, we can go to the Fog of War tab. Right now, Fog of War is not enabled here but I can enable it and then this is going to show that the area is shrouded from a player perspective it would be totally opaque and if I go to the fog layer I can quick draw in some zones here so let's say that um, I don't know let's say that this tapestry had actually gone all the way across um, I can draw that in to hide the uh, the stairway there and draw another zone in here uh, and let's
let's just uh, flick these on. I can right click and reveal, or I can control right -click, right click to just toggle them. So, and let me flip these off quick so that we don't have to look at them. So there we have the the character is able to see this whole area and you know let's pretend that the the tapestry went all the way across once they pull it back then I can control right click here to real reveal this area um, so you can get a lot more fancy with fog of war but um, that's a a real quick taste of what it's like um, you know if I want to go down this hallway I can draw in another zone and and light up the hallway so real quick, easy uh, access to Fog of War. But again, take a look at the other video if you're interested in Fog of War. Thanks.